Hikhas, possessing seven qualities, Sariputta exercises mastery over his mind and is not a servant of his mind. What seven? Here. Sariputta is skilled in samadhi. Skilled in the attainment of samadhi. Skilled in the duration of samadhi, skilled in emergence from samadhi, skilled in fitness for samadhi, skilled in the area of samadhi, and skilled in resolution regarding samadhi. Possessing these seven qualities, Sariputta exercises mastery over his mind and is not a servant of his mind. Basis for being elder On one occasion the Lord was dwelling at Savathi in Jita's Grove, Anathapandika's Park. Then, in the morning, the venerable Sariputta dressed, took his bowl and robe, and entered Savathi for alms. It then occurred to him. It is still too early to walk for alms in Savathi. Let me go to the park of the ascetics of other sects. Then the venerable Sariputta went to the park of the wander ers of other sects. He exchanged greetings with those ascetics and, when they had concluded their greetings and cordial talk, sat down to one side. Now on that occasion those ascetics had assembled and were sitting together when this conversation arose among them. Friends, Anyone at all who lives the complete and purified Brahmacharya for twelve years is fit to be called a bhikkhu who is taintless. Then the venerable Sariputta neither delighted in nor rejected the statement of those ascetics, but rose from his seat and left, thinking. I shall find out what the Lord has to say about this statement. Then, when the venerable Sariputta had walked for alms in Savathi, after his meal, on returning from his alms round, he approached the Lord, paid homage to him, and sat down to one side. He here reports verbatim the entire course of events and asks. Is it possible, Banti, in this Dhamma and discipline to describe a bhikkhu as taintless by the mere counting of years? In this Dhamma and discipline, Sariputta, it isn't possible to describe a bhikkhu as taintless by the mere counting of years. There are, Sariputta, these seven bases for being taintless that I have proclaimed after realizing them for myself with direct knowledge. What seven? Here, a bhikkhu has a keen desire to undertake the training and does hot lose his fondness for undertaking the training in the future. He has a strong desire to attend to the Dhamma and does not lose his fondness for attending to the Dhamma in the future. He has a strong desire to remove vain wishes and does not lose his fondness for removing vain wishes in the future. He has a strong desire for seclusion and does not lose his fondness for seclusion in the future. He has a strong desire to arouse energy and does not lose his fondness for arousing energy in the future. He has a strong desire for mindfulness and alertness and does not lose his fondness for mindfulness and alertness in the future. He has a strong desire to penetrate by view and does not lose his fondness for penetrating by view in the future. These are the seven bases for being taintless that I have proclaimed after realizing them for myself with direct knowledge. Sariputta, if a bhikkhu possesses these seven bases for being taintless, then, if he lives the complete and pure spiritual life for twelve years, he is fit to be called taintless. If, too, he lives the complete and pure brahmacharya for twenty-four years, he is fit to be called taintless. If, too, he lives the complete and pure Brahmacharya for 36 years, he is fit to be called taintless. If, too, he lives the complete and pure Brahmacharya for 48 years, he is fit to be called taintless. Basis for being taintless. Thus have I heard. On one occasion the Lord was dwelling at Kosumbi in Gozita's park. Then, in the morning, the venerable Ananda dressed, took his bowl and robe, and entered Kosumbi for alms. It then occurred to him. It is still too early to walk for alms in Kosumbi. Let me go to the park of the ascetics of other sects. Then the venerable Ananda went to the park of the ascetics of other sects. As in. Substituting Ananda for Sariputta and Kosumbi for Savathi. Is it possible, Banti, in this Dhamma and discipline to describe a bhikkhu as taintless by the mere counting of years? In this Dhamma and discipline, Ananda. It isn't possible to describe a bhikkhu as taintless by the mere counting of years. There are, Ananda, these seven bases for being taintless that I have proclaimed after realizing them, for myself with direct knowledge. What seven? Here, a bhikkhu has faith, a sense of moral shame, moral dread. 
he is learned, energetic, mindful, and wise. These are the seven bases for being taintless that I have proclaimed after realizing them for myself with direct knowledge. Ananda, if a bhikkhu possesses these seven bases for being taintless, then, if he lives the complete and pure brahmacharya for twelve years, he is fit to be called taintless. If, too, he lives the complete and pure brahmacharya for twenty-four years, he is fit to be called taintless. If, too, he lives the complete and pure brahmacharya for thirty-six years, he is fit to be called taintless. If, too, he lives the complete and pure brahmacharya for forty-eight years, he is fit to be called taintless. V. The Great Sacrifice Section. Pali Versions. Pali English Version and Pali Devanagari Version. Seven Stations. Pikhas, there are these seven stations for consciousness. What seven? There are, Pikhas, beings that are different in body and different in perception, such as humans, some devas, and some in the lower world. This is the first station for consciousness. There are beings that are different in body but identical in perception, such as the devas of Brahma's company that are reborn through the first yahana. This is the second station for consciousness. There are beings that are identical in body but different in perception, such as the devas of streaming radiance. This is the third station for consciousness. There are beings that are identical in body and identical in perception, such as the devas of refulgent glory. This is the fourth station for consciousness. There are beings that, with the complete surmounting of perceptions of forms, with the passing away of perceptions of sensory impingement, with non-attention to perceptions of diversity, perceiving space is infinite, belong to the sphere of the infinity of space. This is the fifth station for consciousness. There are beings that, by completely surmounting the base of the infinity of space, perceiving consciousness is infinite belong to the sphere of the infinity of consciousness. This is the sixth station for consciousness. There are beings that, by completely surmounting the base of the infinity of consciousness, perceiving there is nothing belong to the sphere of nothingness. This is the seventh station for consciousness. These, Pikhas, are the seven stations for consciousness. Samadhi Accessories There are, Pikhas, these seven accessories of samadhi. What seven? Right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, and right meditation. One-pointedness of mind equipped with these seven factors is called noble right samadhi with its supports and with its accessories. Fires. Pick us, there are these seven fires. What seven? The fire of lust, the fire of hatred, the fire of delusion the fire of those worthy of gifts, the householder's fire, the fire of those worthy of offerings, the wood fire. These are the seven fires.